Uh, good morning, Dr. Ferrywood uh, from Malaysia. I think uh, it's our honor to have you here today uh, to be together with us today again. Uh, I think we have uh, we have a se similar session about uh, one uh, about two years back that uh, when the pandemic just started. I think uh, the pandemic have uh, gone through the past two years, and we have we have seen so many uh, the health issue happening to human beings in the world for the past two years, and. Uh, uh, COVID, I will say now most of the country have gone into the endemic and it's going to be a very common thing um, uh, surrounding us. So today, I think we have a session with you to uh, to, to know more uh, about your re recent developments or findings about uh, and all you have found out uh, related to uh, the, the, the virus and the pandemic or post-pandemic. So there are about a few questions that I would like to ask you. Uh, let me start the ball rolling on the first question. In the past two years or so, many people have shown that people with underlying health problems such as cardiovascular disease, diabetics, high blood pressures and obesity are more susceptible to severe COVID-19. A lot of people may think that they are safe even they do not have any pre-existing health conditions. And most have recovered from COVID-19 without deleterious symptoms. Nevertheless, more and more people around us are come, continue to be effect, infected. Even though they are vaccinated, have good hygiene, take precautions, etc. Now, there's evidence showing that even individuals who are not hospitalized with the COVID-19 symptoms are found to have developed cardiovascular health issues. Dr. Murat, what is your thought on this? Let me say, the virus, when the virus got started, it was obvious that it was going to change and mutate with time. There is a protein on the surface of the virus we call the spike protein. And that binds to the angiotensin receptor in the airways. That's the receptor for the binding of the virus. And what's happened now is the cells become infected, the virus can mutate and it can modify the structure of the spike protein. And now there's very, there are various variants of the virus. Now, fortunately, many of them are not as lethal. The mortality rate has been decreasing with the virus mutants, but they become more infectious. They're clever, so they transmit the disease more readily, but people are not as sick as they were before. But there, there are sick. There's a small percentage that get very sick and a small percentage that die, but the, the mortality rate is much lower. But what's happening now is that some of the people may not have much in the way of symptoms, mm. but they're developing what we call a long form of the disease. They continue to have virus, it's milder, but it influences a lot of tissues, the vascular system, the cardiovascular system, various organs in our body. And we don't know very much about this COVID long form disease. We're learning and it's gonna take more time. Mm. But fortunately, there are a few drugs now out there and there are some vaccines that seem to be effective against these mutants. So I think it will be able to control the spread of the disease, but we can't really answer all the pathology at this point without more research, more time. It's going to take a while to get all the answers. But some of the people who have this long form of the disease, it may have had just mild symptoms and they develop symptoms later, maybe weeks or months later, and it can affect a variety of organs. And it's been a very variable disorder. It can affect the blood vessels can affect the heart, the liver, the, the brain, and other tissues as well. And we don't know enough about it at the moment. And it, 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 we need more research. So, Dr. Murat, after, after listening to your uh, reply on the first question, uh, does these situations happen regardless of age, gender, and even in people without any medical history of cardiovascular disease? I think we're seeing it can affect any age. The virus can infect young people, elderly people, 
males, females, different races, different ethnic backgrounds. It doesn't influence just one small percent of the population. It can affect basically anybody. Now, having said that, anyone can be at risk of developing cardiovascular disease after yes. having recovered from COVID. Even though yeah. they may... It yeah. could influence the cardiovascular problem in anybody. Correct. So, so it, it also means that the, the heart is no longer a topic only for the elderly, but that everyone should be proactive in taking care of their heart health. Dr. Mirat, what can be done as part of the preventive measures to have better heart health? Well, we certainly shouldn't be smoking. <laughs> we know that's bad for heart health and blood vessels. Uh, we need a, a more balanced diet, more nutritional supplements, more antioxidants in our supplements. The substrate to make nitric oxide is L-arginine and amino acid. So we have to watch our diet or we have to take supplements. And that's why the supplements with L-arginine are so popular because we're increasing the production of nitric oxide. L-arginine is the precursor converted by the enzyme in our tissues, nitric oxide synthase, to make nitric oxide. And that enzyme has cofactors, enzyme helper molecules that have to be in the reduced state. If they're oxidized by inflammatory reactions and re reactive oxygen species or lipid species, those cofactors won't be as effective in making nitric oxide helping the enzyme. So in producing these nutritional supplements, we want arginine in them and we want a variety of antioxidants to keep the cofactors for the biochemical pathways as functional as possible. But it's rather simple biochemistry, but it's, <laughs> it's complicated biochemistry because the enzyme is in all of our tissues and there's several different isoforms the enzyme can come in three different gene products, isoforms. And some are more in blood vessels and some are more in neuronal cells and some are in inflammatory cells. So we're learning more and more about the biochemistry, but a lot of this relates to cardiovascular problems. But there could be other problems as well. We know if we influence nitric oxide production in the brain, we can influence memory. We can influence the size of a stroke. So, and oh, it really does an amazing job all over the body. But where can we get an O in our daily, uh, daily life? Well, we get it by eating arginine, getting it in supplements, and also from various food products that contain nitrite and nitrate that are converted to nitric oxide. Leafy vegetables, spinach, kale, watermelon. These are rich in nitrites and nitrates, and they're converted to nitric oxide. They're, they're not nitroglycerin, but they behave like nitroglycerin, is what I'm saying. They're precursors converted to nitric oxide. Our body makes lots of molecules. It makes some arginine, but it doesn't make enough. A essential, but priorly, part, partly an essential amino acid. Essential means that we need to take it in from an exogenous source in our diet or medication. Most of the other amino acids we can make in our body, but we don't make enough arginine in our body. We have to get some of it through our diets and supplements. So there are lots of foods that possess arginine. There are many few foods, leafy vegetables, that contain nitrite and nitrate as a precursor to make nitric oxide. We designed the product b -fill we put in arginine and we put in various antioxidants to help make more nitric oxide. Yeah, Dr. Mirat, but I think that that, uh, that inspired you uh, to, to, to do more research about L-arginine and, and, and after that, uh, that led you to get a Nobel Prize award. Maybe you can elaborate a bit more on that. I was one of the first medical students and graduate students in the United States. When I was young, I knew I wanted to be a doctor and go to medical school. But I was also interested in teaching and research, so I realized I was probably going to become a professor uh -huh. and do research in science. And when I finished college, Western Reserve University in Cleveland was the very first school to combine the two programs. 
they took the MD program and the PhD program and put them together in what we called a combined degree program. All right. Instead of four years or five years of medical school and four or five years of graduate school, they put them together and created a seven-year program to do both, and I was one of the first students to do that. Wow. So I knew I was going to become a doctor and a scientist and a teacher and a professor, and I knew that when I was 12 years old. Oh. So the, during your the, this uh, research about our genome, the, uh, do you discover any particular things that uh, 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 actually uh, releasing the uh, this uh, NO with the intracellular cyclic GMP? Well, there are lots of foods that have sodium nitrite or nitrate, and they're converted. They're the oxidation products of NO. To terminate the effects of NO, it becomes oxidized to nitrite or nitrate, which is less effective. But if you have antioxidants around, it can convert those oxidized products back to NO. So they're precursors to make nitric oxide. So the foods rich in nitrite and nitrate can make more nitric oxide in the body. And there are lots of vegetables that contain nitrite and nitrate. Just now you mentioned uh, it's good to take a uh, allergenic products to improve the NO uh, release in the body. You can you share with us what beef fuel is made of and uh, what make beef fuel outstanding as a compared okay. to other allergenic supplements? Yeah, beef fuel has L-arginine, the substrate to make nitric oxide, and it has several different antioxidants to keep the cofactors that are required by the enzyme to convert arginine to nitric oxide, those cofactors have to be reduced if they're oxidized because of reactive inflammation. Whenever we have inflammation, we make reactive oxygen species that are oxidizing molecules. And that's not good to make NO because they will inactivate NO and they will inactivate the, the cofactors required by the enzyme by oxidizing them. So when we constructed the b fill product, we took L-arginine plus different antioxidants, vitamin C, CoQ10. They're all very good antioxidants to keep those cofactors in the reduced state. So the enzyme is more effective at making nitric oxide from L-arginine. It has a mixture of, of antioxidants and also some products that contain nitrite and nitrate that are precursors to get converted into you know. So we're approaching the nano problem from several different directions. We're making more of it by the enzyme pathways, providing the cofactors in a state that will help the enzyme be more active. And some of those products are precursors that are converted to nitric oxide. So it has a combination of approaches. The, the ability of COVID to replicate can be influenced by nitric oxide. High levels of nitric oxide can kill viruses, bacteria, and fungi. It's antibacterial, it's antiviral. There's a laboratory that grows the coronavirus in its laboratory. It's a commercial laboratory. And if you expose the cells that make the you know, to nitric oxide, prevents the formation and replication of the virus. So it's cytotoxic. And there are companies that are delivering topical nitric oxide for wound healing and antibacterial properties, and also inhalation to prevent the infection of the airways by the virus. So it's been useful to prevent the disease and also treat it as well. Mm. That company happens to be located in Vancouver, Canada, and they're in clinical trials. And they have a product, an inhalation product, that they were using for sinusitis. And I suggested that they try it for coronavirus, and it works. And they're now marketing the product in India and in uh, Israel. And perhaps it'll come in the U.S. and other countries in the next few, few months or year. And it's all nitric oxide related to influence the replication of the virus. So it's going to be a therapeutic as well. 
but we've used it topically to in, prevent infections in animals but on the skin. If we create a burn or a lethal effect on the skin, it prevents the growth of bacteria. It's a vasodilator because it's vascular properties. It improves blood supply, the wounds heal faster. Now, it's really got some very interesting effects. There's another company that uses it on the feet to improve diabetic foot ulcers, preventing bacterial growth and increasing blood supply to the tissues in the feet to treat diabetic ulcers, which is a bad disease because many of those patients end up with amputations because mm -hmm. of the bad ulcers. So it's a remarkable molecule with many, many very important and useful effects. And coronavirus is one of them, but it does lots of other things as well. It controls blood flow, controls blood pressure, controls the heart rate. It controls atherosclerosis and inhibits the production of atherosclerotic plaques. It promotes memory in the brain. It influences renal function as well in the kidneys. Well, that's a complicated story, and that's something I'm working on now. We have some preliminary data that nitric oxide and cyclic GMP as well can influence the replication of cancer cells. And we're trying to figure out how to come up with a product for that. Um, and it's a very, cancer is very complicated, but we do know that if we try to grow cancer cells in the laboratory, if we expose them to lots of nitric oxide or cyclic GMP, we can inhibit the growth of the cancer. So how can we use that information to create some new therapy for some cancers? But during your your, your research uh, that you get a award of Nobel Prize, you have found something that l arginine and uh, is quite similar to some drug sources convert to NO. Am I right? The way we found it, as a student, I was interested in how drugs and hormones were working in the body. And my advisor had discovered cyclic AMP, another messenger molecule. Uh -huh. And he found that there were two important hormones that regulated cyclic GMP, AMP, cyclic mm -hmm. AMP in the liver. And these were epinephrine and glucagon. So as a student, I found that there were many, many hormones that regulated the formation of cyclic AMP, another messenger molecule. Mm -hmm. And along the way, another laboratory discovered cyclic GMP in the urine of rabbits. And I thought cyclic GMP might influence the production of cyclic AMP. And that's how I got started. As I finished my fellowship, I began working more and more with cyclic GMP. And that led to the discovery of nitric oxide. I was looking for hormones that would regulate either cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. And we found a few hormones regulating both, cyclic A or cyclic G. But what was really interesting is that when we put these agents that were making cyclic GMP on tissues, like smooth muscle, we had airway smooth muscle, they increased cyclic GMP and caused relaxation. And one of the drugs that we worked with was nitroglycerin, mm. which was known to be, to be used for 100 years to treat patients with angina. And it wow. turned out that nitroglycerin was being converted to nitric oxide. That's how, that's how we discovered nitric oxide. Very important in cardiovascular medicine, that was the reason for the Nobel Prize. But what I'm telling you is it's important in many other areas as well. And that research has taken on the, like we've done in the last 30 or 40 years, a long time. Yeah. So beside the L-arginine, which act as a food vessel dilator, what other nutrients are beneficial to promote a healthy circulatory system without converting NO to other toxic molecules? Well, if you can influence the cofactors for these enzymes, you know, antioxidants influence inflammation, they influence atherosclerosis, and all those are important. We, we avoid some lipids because they promote inflammation and they promote atherosclerosis. 
So there are dietary factors that influence those pathways. So there are good things in diets and there are bad things in diets. And by knowing the biochemistry, you can decide which are best for you and which are not. So which are the nutrients that you think beneficial to be included with the by to, to enhance the NO products? Vitamin C, vitamin E, grape extract, grape extract, you have polyphenols. They increase the, the antioxidant effects. They keep the cofactors in the reduced state. So those are, you know, those are nutritional supplements. You know, vitamin C is in orange juice. Uh, vitamin E is in lipids. Uh, it's an antioxidant. Um, there are many things in, in, in spinach. Uh, there's L-arginine plus antioxidants as well. So we try to work with things that are substrates to make, you know, or antioxidants to help the cofactors so the enzyme can make, you know, from arginine. And that's how we put, sub, put nutritional supplements together. How about the, the, the natural products, nat natural ingredients like beetroots and pomegranate? What do you think? Is that a good, is a good combination to, en to enhance the NO? As yeah, I, I think so. Yes. And some of them provide nitrate, nitrate also. So the this all these antioxidants like uh, vitamin C, B, just now you mentioned, uh, uh, maybe you have, you might have mentioned about CoQ10 as well. How it helps the the platelet functions? <clears throat> if you increase NO in platelets, you increase cyclic GMP in the platelets. Right. And that inhibits coagulation and blood clotting. Uh -huh. So patients who have cardiac arrhythmias, like atrial fibrillation, uh -huh. the blood going through the heart stalls. It, it doesn't flow smoothly. In the areas where it gets stalled in the atrium, they can start clot forming clots. Uh -huh. And if you have arrhythmias with clots, you can pop off a clot and create a stroke or put it, injure the blood supply to the kidney or some other tissue. So many patient, patients with cardiac arrhythmias, particularly atrial fibrillation, end up having strokes. It's a very common problem. So you really want to have, it, giving the patient antioxidants to keep the you know, production up or to give them other things that will inhibit coagulation. And there's some very good drugs on the market right now. Okay. Well, I think I think B feels really a very good product. We, we tried to give you a product that was very effective, without being very very expensive. And so it was, and we tried to pick products to put in the, to make it effective, but it'll reasonable cost for patients to take. You know, there there's some antioxidants that are very very expensive. I'm sure there will be more, uh, but but I think the combination that. Tushar and I put together was really effective and gave you a very good product that could be used really for all sorts of people with a variety of problems. Not only cardiovascular problems, but other problems as well. Yeah, the other minute when you uh, when you study about this formula, uh, are you formulating it? Uh, you are you're thinking that that's a necessary to consume be fuel in the long long run? And how could people benefit from it? Well, yeah, I think they. it depends on how effective they are in their diet. You know, as we, many people don't eat the right foods. And elderly yeah. people get very fussy and maybe can't afford the right vegetables because they're expensive. And they're probably going to become more expensive. Yep. So I think, it, I think that nutritional supplements are going to become more important than they have in the past be at a reasonable cost so people can afford to buy them. So you think that the beef should be taken long, long in long run to... to I to think it should be taken in the long run, absolutely, yes. How do you think uh, people can benefit from it? Well, because the, the components in the beef hill are there to make more NO and cyclic GMP and have a positive effect, not only on blood vessels, but other tissue as well. And uh, when you formulate this one, I think you are very particular 
as well and uh, and, uh, and and on of the ingredients that chosen and uh, the process yeah i think uh, i think the formula that we have is is a very good formula and the price is reasonable yeah you know you don't want to create a product that's so expensive that people won't take it yeah that you know that in malaysia in a, in the over here southeast asia here uh, a product to be a halal is halal i think that certified for muslim is important right. so what do you think about that yeah no, i think that's important yeah okay uh, we i think we come to about almost the end of the uh, this uh, interview sessions there are last two questions that i would like to ask you is uh last uh what are the takeaway messages that you would like to advise to everyone so as to stay healthy and protected in this covid era or rather the post pandemic well you know there are obvious things to do exercise is important no smoking is important smoking is bad for you it, you know many many people smoke back in the 30s and 40s and 50s it was very common at that point we didn't realize how bad tobacco was for you but now we know so i think the tobacco companies are losing sales uh, so don't smoke exercise as much as you can and have a healthy diet those are all important and if you can't do all those things then you should be taking supplements and the supplement you you recommend highly recommended is the beef fuel am i right yes i do yes uh, let me draw some conclusion about uh Dr. Mirad, uh, it has been a it has been an honor and uh i think grateful to have you on board uh with us since about i think three and a half years ago some uh, we have started this uh, be field together with you and now of course uh, we we never stop to continue to uh make it a better products uh, in the in the view of the future of the human kinds i i believe you you continue to do research at this age is because you want to make the uh the play the, the world a better place so uh i think the for the past one and a half years there are many people who have uh consuming the beef food as what advised by you one and a half years uh, we have an interview and i think they they are very happy with what you have enlightened them and today i hope the this session has definitely have uh, make them even more confident to continue uh in the post uh pandemic era and uh the post covid era okay so thank you for your time okay yeah we hope to see you soon in malaysia physically again of course <laughs> after, when everything is getting getting better and uh uh then uh we, we, we shall meet uh, uh again in the near future but definitely all your all your advices and uh all your op uh, opinions about uh getting ourselves uh, in a better stage is uh i think well, well taken off as well <laughs> well thank you very much <laughs>